Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm doing another creepy encounter stories. I still can't get over the last one with the paramedic. There's so many questions, but it's fine. I'm gonna move on. I need to move on. What's been babbling me is how did no one hear the gunshot? If the gun was already recovered, there was no silencer. How did no one hear the gunshot? Anyways, moving on. Let's see to the three, the next three creepy encounters. This one is called, I dated a murderer. I had gotten out of an eight year, an eight year abusive relationship and met someone on a popular online dating app. To be honest, I wasn't looking for anything serious, just someone to go watch a movie or have a drink with every now and then. I had two boys and was happy and living a peaceful life on my own after going through hell. So I met this, I meet these, this guy who is just a couple years older than me and he had turned his life around when he was younger. He used to be in gangs and drugs and now he was into working out and staying really fit and doing family stuff. I guess you can say I felt protected by him. He was a hard worker, self-sufficient, had a son, and he loved going to the gym every day. I myself had kind of a crazy past, but overcame and so we seemed like a good fit. We would go to dinner, movies, normal dating stuff, but he eventually wanted to spend more and more time together and I was having trouble giving up all my free time for him and he would get angry about this, like really angry. After being with a controlling, possessive asshole for so long, this was obviously a red flag and after three months, I told him I didn't want to see him anymore. He said he needed to confess something to me. He admitted to me that he was using steroids and that was the reason for his mood swing. He cried and said he was sure that was the reason and was willing to stop if it meant he could have another chance. And I obliged, but only under the condition that we remain friends. Things were okay for a while. We saw each other maybe every other week and he started wanting to see me every week to which I told him that I was not interested in being anything other than friends at the moment since I was not ready for a relationship. He tried to talk to me into giving him another chance, but I just don't find myself interested in him in him a romantic way, and so I insisted that we just be friends. I stopped talking to him because I got mad at his, ins at his insistence that we still talk every day since he said that's what friends do. He would always ask about my whereabouts and ask for pictures of who I was hanging out with, and I told him that was that this is not what friends do, and he just insisted that he just innocently wanted to see what I was up to. Fast forward six months later, and I hadn't spoken to him at all within that time. I was happy and living my life, and on one particular night, when my youngest son was at his dad's, I went out to a local bar with my friends. My oldest son, who was 13 at the time, was home alone, so I left a little early to make it home around 10 p.m. I laid down in bed and go to sleep. So a little info on my living situation. I had been living in my condo for almost a year now and we lived in a great safe community and I would leave my patio sliding glass door open, screen closed, to get a breeze in at night, no biggie. My bedroom was close to the patio. My son would sleep in the loft that was closest to the front door. I'm dead asleep when I suddenly feel someone slowly sit on my bed. I'm lying in bed wondering why my son would come sit on my bed so slowly. He wouldn't. I turned around and it's not him, it's Mario, not his real name. Laying down in bed next to me, I sit up and ask him how we got in. He's not answering me. He says, I needed to talk to you. I said, okay, when you need to talk to someone, you don't sneak into someone's room, you call them. You leave a note for them, literally anything but this. I'm thinking, I'm gonna kill my kid for letting him in. He said, I didn't have your number anymore. I needed to talk to you before it's too late. I didn't even entertain the before it's too late bit because I was livid, but something told me to keep my cool. I sit up and say, look, I really want to talk to you, talk to you too, but not like this. Please just leave and I promise we will talk tomorrow. Call me tomorrow. He gets up and walks over to my side of the bed and starts rubbing my shoulders and is slowly making his way to my neck. He says, do you really want to talk? I look him in the eyes and say, yes, I've been wanting to talk to you, but not like this. Please call me tomorrow. He stares at me while rubbing my neck and goes down to my shoulders and lets go. Shoulders and lets go. Says, okay, this motherfucker proceeds to exit through my patio door and jumps my patio wall, which tells me that it's, that is exactly how he got in. 
I freaked the fuck out, check on my kid, he had no idea what was going on, locked all my doors, and I don't sleep the rest of the night. The next day, I texted him and tell him that, that if I ever see him near me or in my complex, I will call the police and to never contact me again. If you're wondering why I didn't call the cops to begin with, I knew he had a gun. So A, I was scared of being re retaliated against for being a snitch, and B, I figured if I called the police, the cops, they would probably not do much or just let him out and I was afraid of what he would do after the fact. Either way, he left me alone and I didn't hear from him for years. Four years later, I'm going through Facebook and I see his face and people you may know. I click on the picture and notice that it looks like a jail picture, you know? Those pictures where the guy's clearly in a jail cell. I scroll down the page and his most recent post is him posting his address for his family members to write to, a prison address. So I Google his name and sure enough, articles after articles, all with the same headline, man arrested on suspicion of killing girlfriend. About two years after him and I dated, he shot and killed the girl he was dating. That could have been me, and I feel like shit thinking if there was anything I could have done to stop him. Even scary thought is that he only got 12 years for her murder. Give me a sec, my cat wants in. Really? Why does my cat like to play the in and out game? It's fun! Anyways, um... Moral of the story, lock your doors, keep your doors shut, okay, even if, I mean, I'm in a fairly safe neighborhood like hers, like, my neighborhood's gated, but anyone can still come in, if they wait long enough, yeah, but things happen, you don't know your neighbors, you don't know what they're gonna do, but... Yeah, I'm glad she's alive. I'm sorry that the next girlfriend passed. That's like, that's sad. Like, that actually makes me sad. Um, but yeah. Someone commented, Wow, girl, your survival instincts were spot on. The way your story reads, reads, it seems like he was going to choke you to death and you managed to reassure him and calm him down. How scary. And then someone was upset for the 12 years. I'm upset for that. Only 12 years for murder? Yeah, he should be in prison for life. And then someone does, it's a short story. Says, my neighbor going up chopped his wife up. They found parts of her all over two states. He got 10 years for murder and two more for use of a deadly weapon. 12 years total, that was it. I'm sorry, but if you murder someone, the minimum you should get is 25 years. be your minimum maximum obviously is life but let's move on to the next one because i think the first two are oh no it's, this is not that long okay so the next one is found out my friend dad my friend's dad is a creep i'm sorry if i struggle through words this is how i normally speak so let's read the story let me repeat the title it says found out my friend's dad is a creep Okay, first of all, should I put a trigger warning? Nothing too bad happens, but it's enough to make some people uncomfortable. So take caution reading this. Anyway, I was 15 and had just transferred into a new school. I made a friend immediately, and after a few weeks, I asked my mom and she agreed to let me spend the night. I'm not gonna give out my friend's real name, so let's just call her Kelsey. Anyway, I, got, I get to Kelsey's place and it's all fun and games. I met her mom, who I absolutely adore, and even managed to make a few jokes with both her parents, even though her dad seemed more partial to grunting. Around 10, we both got sleepy and since I have horrible memory, I didn't remember to bring something to sleep with, so I borrowed a shirt from Kelsey that went down to my knees. We also slept together in the same bed. I know, probably not a good idea to be wearing just a shirt, with under stuff, of course to a sleepover, but I trusted my friend and she was wearing something similar. We both passed out, but I woke up some time later because I could feel the blanket moving. I turned my head and saw a shadowy figure. I could just barely make out to be her dad, step back from the bed and drop the blanket. I blinked in his direction like twice and then instantly fell asleep again. Dumb, I know, but I was dead tired and too sleepy to be properly alarmed. I felt the same thing after I fell asleep again, and this time I didn't move around too much. I looked and verified that yes, 
that was my friend's father and that he was lifting the blanket of the side I was sleeping on. My thighs were exposed because a shirt had written up when I slept and I sat up scaring him away from the blanket again. Yeah, it took it happening twice, but I finally caught on caught onto what was going on and say I was scared was an understatement. I had a lot of shit going through my mind of potential hopeful ways that could have could have ended. I made sure the blanket was around my legs and still acted sleepy because I didn't want him to know how aware I was. He moved away from the foot of the bed and stood by the TV telling me some BS story that he was just there to turn it down or whatever. I just went with it. He stood there for like three minutes just looking back to see if I would lay down again. I was even thinking about it. The fact that he was waiting on it would have stopped me. Thankfully, he left the room and I grabbed my phone and tried my hardest to call my parents. They didn't answer because it was like 3 a.m. As I was trying to reach them, though, I noticed that he never really left the hallway bathroom space in front of Kelsey's door. He was still waiting for me to fall back asleep and, as such, poked his head into the room every few minutes. At that point, I felt sick. I was the most terrified I'd, I'd ever been in my life because I suddenly realized that we were the only two awake in the house. I went on... I don't know what sham chat is. It's supposed to be Snapchat? I don't know what it's called. Sham check. Let's learn. Oh, it's another Reddit thread. Okay. I don't know everything, okay? Where was I? Where's my sham chat at? <laughs> I know I'm making a joke, but that's because that's how I process things. Okay, I went on Sam, Sam, I found it. I went on Shim Chat just to contact people and not feel so isolated. I would have woke Kelsey, but I didn't. I was too scared and I didn't want to lose my friend, first friend. So I didn't bother to wake her up. I just stayed on my phone all night until she woke up. And I made her come with me to the bathroom because I was so nervous. If you're curious, I did eventually tell her what happened. She begged me to tell her mom, me to tell her mom and I did, and I did, even though I didn't want to. She then came home with me and refused to leave until I told my mom. Together they managed to get him out of the house and Kelsey's still one of my closest friends to this day. And I'm immensely grateful for the fact that I'm a light sleeper. The only thing that woke me up those two times was because I could feel the blanket being lifted. It was such a small thing, but I'm so fucking lucky that it woke me up. He could have done a lot worse than look if it wasn't for that. Someone commented, I'm amazed she begged you to tell her mom. That friend is a keeper. And then someone commented, I truly think she begged her to tell her mom because her father had been doing this, if not worse, to her, and she was too scared to tell, maybe worried no one would believe her. This was her way of being, of being, getting it to stop. This was her way of, this is how it's, it's written. This way was her way of being, getting it to stop. This was her way of getting it to stop. You don't need being, but that's okay. And that's someone comments under that. Yeah, there's no way he only did this to her friends, especially considering the two of them were sleeping next to each other. And OP comments. I didn't mention it because it's not my half of the story to tell, so I won't go into detail about what exactly happened. She's okay, don't worry, but I will confirm that you all are right. Kelsey's doing great though, if you wanted to know. So yeah. This motherfucker was raping little girls. <laughs> Just 10 minutes, that's all I ask. Don't get a cat, they're like two year olds. Let me, let me finish the next story being such short. You're fine, oh my God, he's ready to bounce. Anyways, the next story is called Hidden Camera in the Hotel I Was Showering In. The reason why I wanted to add this, because I read, I re only read the titles. I don't read what's in them. Um, because we live in a world where cameras come in small, small things. So this is a warning of check your hotel rooms before you ever remotely get naked in them. So here's the story of hidden camera in the hotel I was showering in. 
so my stupid brand new water heater broke down from all the calcium and things in the water and so we rented a hotel room so we could all get a shower. My hubby and teenage daughters had gone first. While they took a shower, I had already been looking for cameras after shows and articles depicting warnings to check and had me freaked out. My husband had laughed at me, so I thought we were safe. It wasn't until I was actually standing inside the shower that I saw the camera. You had to see it from a certain angle wrapped around the light that had a cover over the bottom of it, but an opening all the way around the edges in the middle. I looked up and there it was. I screamed and my hubby came running in. I told him what it was him what it was and he checked and sure enough he took the bottom cover off and the camera fell down and was actually wired to the light and set to sit and point looking down into the shower. My husband grip, ripped it out and marched straight to the office and from there a fight ensued. The creepy guy got pissed my husband was destro destroying his room and the owner called the cops. Well my hubby is a hothead when he's on a moral mission and grabbed the guy up by the scruff of the collar. His mentality being, if I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to make it worth it. Me. If I'm going to jail, there's going to be a reason why. But the guy's wife came out, come out, and by then I was dressed and there, there for a backup, and she wanted to know what was happening. So I told her what happened. She said, wait, right here? She said, wait, right here. She had grabbed a knife from her room and was chasing the owner, owner guy around with it. When the cops showed up, the cops asked us what happened first. When we told them, they took the owner in and apparently found hundreds of videos in a private nook in his bedroom they're using to build a case on him with. So be aware to check everywhere before ever undressing in a hotel. Yeah, because it doesn't even have to be the owner. It could be a local person who can easily get access. It can be workers. It can be just someone who was there before you who then rents it out after someone else uses it like we have creepy people so the, re the moral of this one is check everywhere if you ever rent a hotel room and if you don't like hotel rooms i get it if you want to sleep in your car because when all this stuff actually was happening i was like i wonder and that wondering got me scared so my cat my cat came my cat <laughs> He's giving us some loves. Giving him some love. He's 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 giving us some loves. Enjoy some Binksy loves. I'm not good. Okay, okay. So with that being done, am I cat giving all of you his love? If you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe and turn on the bell notification. And if you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe and turn on the bell. Oh my god, let me redo that. If you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe and turn on the bell notification. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.